Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be talking about Next.js and Langchain. And one of the reasons that we want to go over this is we're starting to see JavaScript being used in different AI models, applications, and tools. You can think of things like Flowwise AI, as well as Embed Chain. And then specifically in Langchain, there's things like the Next.js code space that's on their docs specifically for a chat. There's also the Langchain Next.js starter chat template in Vercel. And then you even have some experimental things like Web Langchain, which was written in Next.js as kind of a research tool. Last but not least, you can also track everything in Langsmith. So that's what we're going to look at today is we're going to build essentially a hello world application that allows us to connect Next.js to a Langchain application and then visualize it and monitor it with Langsmith. All right, so the, the first thing that we're going to do for getting started is we actually need to build our next applic Next.js application. And so to do that, we can just use Next.px create next app. It's going to ask us a series of questions like what our project name is, et cetera. But there's two key important things. The first is that we are not using TypeScript in this instance, and that we are using the app router. So once you have your uh, app set up, the next thing you need to do is do an npm install for Langchain to actually get the package. And they act in the docs on the Langchain uh, JS documentation, they actually have a point for Vercel and Next.js. And this is really important because they go over a couple of things, not only just to import it, but they also list out that it can be used in serverless functions, ed edge functions, and then actually in the front end components itself. This is pretty interesting because that means, again, that we're using the uh, different types of AI models in the front end. So if we what we're going to do with this is go through a couple of different examples. We'll go through the traditional route of looking at the uh, API, and then we'll actually just load Langchain in the front end. So let's go ahead and get started. So I put together this application. It has pretty much everything that you would need. If you're interested in it, it'll be down in the comments. There's also a link to subscribe to our newsletter. And what we're going to go through is the React portion of this first. So you can see here that what I'm doing is I'm going to be setting a topic. And I'll show you what this looks like first. So if we go over to our local host, this is what we're building. We have a form, we can submit, and then we're just going to print out the results, kind of like a hello world of how we're using Langchain. So in our uh, React portion, which is in our, our page over here, we're just going to be doing a quick and dirty example of a prompt template. So what a prompt template is, is it allows you to take a string and put together a prompt that you would want to use in some sort of dynamic way. And the way to do this is you just have your curly brackets and you put in your variable. And then you would prompt the format of whatever your variable name is and the topic. So if we go back to test this out and we just say, uh, I don't know, socks, what we can do is that it'll print out what is a good name for a company that makes socks. Again, this is all happening in the, in the browser. If we wanted to use OpenAI in the browser, we would need to expose our OpenAI key to the, the to Next.js. In order to do that, you would actually have to have your open AI key with the next prefix. However, that's not really secure, so we don't necessarily want to do that. If you wanted to expose your, uh, use the key right in the browser though, you could use something like session storage or local storage to allow the user to put in their own key, and then that way it would delete it after time. Still not the best security practice, but it would be a way to allow you to, to move forward. So now that we've seen how to do this in the front end, remember, this is actually using lane chain in the front end. We're going to switch to going a more traditional route and have it being protected by an API. 
So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to look at our, we're going to create a fetch. Again, we're putting in our next, uh, our public base URL. In this case, it would just be localhost. And then we're putting our URI, which is API slash LLM. We're going to have a post, and then we're going to have our topic and our, our body that's being stringified to go to the back end. And then we're awaiting our response, at which, say, at which point we'll set the result, which again is getting shown down here as a way to kind of console log our, our result. On the back end, what we need to do is in our app folder, we need to create an API folder and then our LLM folder and then a route. This allows us to create the API URL right here. So if we look at this, what we're going to be doing is we're still using our prompt template. We're using our chat OpenAI chat model. We're setting up our export post function. So this is how we would actually hit the route specifically based on the method. And then we're going to be looking for our data. So this is the way that we pull our request data. We're going to destruct our topic. Here's our model. We don't have to put anything in here because again, in our environment variable, we have our OpenAI API key. So it's defaulting to whatever this dot uh, env is. Then we're creating a prompt template. In this case, what we're going to be saying is tell me a joke about our topic. And then we're going to create a pipe for our, temp our prompt template. And then we're taking our chain and we're actually invoking it and then returning our response. So this is using the JavaScript response. We're doing another JSON stringify. And then we're telling it we want our status of 200. So this should give us the, uh, the data, the result of what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and make sure this is saved. And then we'll do a test. So now if we switch this, we don't want it to be what is a good name for. And we're going to say, tell us a joke about JavaScript. As you can see down here, we're actually sending this information out. So our payload is our topic of JavaScript, and we're getting our response, which we're seeing in our code block. We have our content, which is right here. So why do JavaScript developers prefer wearing glasses? That's a good one for me, because they don't miss any exceptions. Nice. All right, so next what we want to do is we want to actually go in and we want to connect this to Langsmith. This is actually really simple. And, and we've seen this in the Python example, which I'll have a link to for our other video. All you need to do, though, is put in your environment variables for laying chain tracing, your API key, and your project, and you'll, you'll be able to monitor your uh, sequence. So if we, we already sent this through, I already had the environments variables set up. So if we look at our project, we can see here we have a Next.js hello world. We have a run count of one. It tells us our total tokens and what our latency is. So if we go ahead and click here, we have our runnable sequence. It shows us that we're using the prompt template. We're using the open AI. And we can actually look through at our success. What we could also do is we can actually, if we had uh, a data set, we could use, or if we wanted to, we could add this to our data set. So with that, this is what we learned today. We learned how we could put together a Next.js and Langchain application. We kind of looked or talked about some things like Embed.js and even like the research project that Langchain has put out, which is uh, web lang chain. We'll actually have a video upcoming on that. And if you're interested in the Python version, you can check out our channel. I'll leave a, a video up here. With that, don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy nerding. We'll see you soon.